everybody, Mike from Fisher MN here, and it's been a week of firsts. I lost my first GoPro camera in the river. Not a good first. I made a 20 mile journey down the river. That was pretty cool. And now, a first for me, I'm gonna do a walkthrough of my Hobie Pro Angler kayak. Let's go. At first glance, my kayak doesn't stand out a whole lot. I don't have a big power pole off the back. I don't have a 10 inch fish finder on it, but you know what? It's set up pretty nice for fishing. So let's start with what makes these Hobies pretty special. This year, I invested in a new Mirage Drive for my Hobie Pro Angler. I got the Mirage Drive 180, and the only difference between this one and the original is that it now has reverse. And that was my decision this year. I thought, buy a power pole, or buy an extra drive, I decided to go with the extra drive this year. And it's proven to be pretty nice. Um, what I didn't like was sometimes when I hooked a bass, I would get pulled into the weeds or into the area I was fishing. So now with just a pull of a lever, I can be going backwards and kind of stay out of that area as the fish pulls on my line. So it was a good purchase for the fishing that I do. For now, I'm gonna keep my extra drive for maybe some of those uh, rougher river sections and uh, maybe taking it on long trips so that I have an extra one if something happens to this one. Staying in the back, I've got a set of wheels that are recommended by Hobie for kind of general use. Um, if you've seen some other videos, the beach wheels are kind of bigger and thicker, um, but these have um, done really well. I want to be the first person who has a Hobie kayak who actually wears out the tread on these because they use them so much. I launch my boat about a hundred times a year and I never back the trailer into the water. So that's something I do. I wheel it down. I figure it kind of saves on um, wear and tear on the trailer. And sometimes at those busy landings, it's easy just to kind of sneak in off to the side and get to fishing right away. I don't um, usually use a crate back here. I'm pretty compact with the baits that I use. So these wheels usually stay with me. I keep them stowed right upside down here behind me as I fish. Of course you got the paddle here. It's always nice when you get in those tight spots to have a paddle to help you kind of back out, especially in the weeds. Even though I have reverse on my drive system now, um, it's good. It, you got to have a paddle because um, the weeds sometimes affect the drive. Of course the sticker that's all the rage is the Fisher MN bumper sticker. I'm lucky enough to have a sister who's a graphic designer and she designed me some nice bumper stickers. Um, be looking at my channel this summer. I'm gonna look at maybe doing some giveaways. So if you're interested in a sticker, you might be able to get one. I only put stickers on my kayak for things that I really, really endorse. And um, I've always worn Columbia stuff, so I really like that Columbia sticker. Moving forward here, I have my safety light for night. Um, as you can see, I've got a rail blaze system. If you don't know what that is, it's a starport system. And Hobie got smart with their H rail, and they have uh, adapters for all the rail blaze stuff. So I can just snap that right in. This pole extends, and on the very top, let me show you here. It's a Navis Safe Light, and there are, you probably can't see it, but there are green and red lights. I had a different system, but I found out that there are some pretty strict guidelines as far as having the right sticker for navigating. I don't think in Minnesota we're ever gonna be called on it, but if you're in a state where you're on the ocean or on some more um, kind of famous waterways, you wanna have the right stuff. So Navisafe had everything that was required um, through the Coast Guard. Um, and that's usually that the light can be seen for at least two miles. I like it because it's got red and green in the front and it's got white in the back. And it's not so bright that it um, interferes with my night fishing. So we'll click this right in here. I just love the Rail Blazes system. It hasn't failed me yet. Um, moving up the side here, I usually run with about three fishing rods. So I decided to just go with one rod holder. Um, and essentially, 
just kind of click my rod in as I'm um, getting the fish off the hook. I don't do a whole lot of trolling where my rod's in the rod holder. Here in Minnesota, we can only fish with one line. So usually if I'm trolling, I'm holding my own rod. Of course, when you catch a fish, you need to measure it. So kind of standard issue for kayakers. The hog trough measuring system really helps, especially with bass. Um, got all my numbers. I took a permanent marker and made it so I could read them a little bit easier so that could be seen on videos. So when you watch one of my videos and you see me measure something, you know that my measurement is what I say it is. All right, just kind of come around the front. On uh, the side here, I did go with the anchor trolley system. It's a nice little pulley system so that you can position your anchor wherever you want it by using these rings here. So um, I'm not much of a stay in place kind of fisherman, but it is pretty handy if I need to angle my kayak and stop somewhere. And it doesn't take a very powerful anchor either. All right, coming up on this side, my fish finder mount. I run a Lowrance Elite fish finder, just a small one. That was another thing I was thinking about this year, uh, maybe getting something with side scan because this 2019 Hobie is ready for that. It's got a transducer mount that recesses up into the boat and then when you use it you can put it down. If you hit a, a log or something it'll just kind of recess up there. Hobie has been so smart about par partnering with Lowrance and making sure their stuff works. But for me, I'm usually in the lily pads and I'm not going to be using side scan too much. Someday I might get one, but it doesn't look like anytime soon. From the driveway to the water, I thought that I would show you some of the things I've mentioned in action. I'm out here fishing today and here's my Lowrance Elite 4 HDI all hooked up. You can get a fancier unit, but it does well for what I need it for. Right here's one of my camber mounts. Once again, rail blazer, rail blazer on the end. As you can see, there is a custom mount because, as you'll see in an upcoming video, or, or you've already seen in my video, I lost a camera and a mount recently. That was not a fun experience, but things happen. So I just came back and took some PVC and some of the old mounting board from my um, former Hobie kayak and got a mount built. As I'm walking onto this side, you see I've got a fish grabber. To me, this is not a fish grabber. This is a fish rester. Once I get the fish off the hook, sometimes I'll hook them up, let them get their energy back. Or maybe if I don't have a camera ready or something, I'll hook them up. Just leave them in the water, seems to work great. These just kind of clamp, especially for bass. Let them swim around. Usually when I pull them back up, they're pretty fresh. So that's all that serves the purpose for for me. Another thing I mentioned in the driveway was this hook. And there it is in action. I've got a fish that I caught. I can hook them up. And when I'm ready to release them, just click it. And back he goes. got my landing net. Um, I did have an issue a few years back. I was casting and my lure caught on my net and I ended up breaking the end of my rod. Now that wouldn't be so horrible but I make my own custom rods so that was a lot of work down the drain. So what I've done with this net, I usually use it for river situations, is I cut the bottom off and now it sits down a little further. And so far, so good, it's worked out pretty well. A couple more stickers on the back. Of course, Rapala. You've seen me use skitter walks and other Rapalas in my videos. And there it is, that Fisher MN sticker. One more little thing on the back. I don't know if it's required. I used to have a piece of material hanging off here that was red, but since it comes off the back of the trailer, I've decided to put a reflective sticker back there. So it makes me feel a little more comfortable as people are coming up behind me. So pretty basic, right? Um, but there's a couple little hidden things that I think you might like, especially if you're um, new to Pro Hobie Pro Anglers. And one of the things I need to tell you 
is this is my second hull. Uh, my first hull, I had some issues right in here where the seat connects on both sides, cracks. And that was after using it for about three years, so the warranty was out. And I went back to High Tempo Sports, where I bought my kayak in Minnesota, White Bear Lake. High Tempo Sports is one of the only places you can get a Hobie kayak. And I worked with a man named Jeremy there, and he really helped me out. And Hobie also helped me out. I did not get this fully replaced. I ended up paying about $1,000, but I got a brand new hull, and that's worked out just great. Um, so some lessons learned on just being careful with the seat and how I'm using it. Um, but I also think there was a bit of a design flaw there and just the fact that Hobie helped me out, I think they were kind of saying that also. So all in all, it worked out. This hull has been rock solid. Let me show you a couple other little things that I do that you might want to do if you get a Hobie Pro Angler. When you look inside here, I've got some all-weather extreme Velcro. And what I did was, I love magnetic mounts, and I just stuck them to the side, and now I have my magnetic mounts. In my other Hobie hull, what I did was, I used screws to attach everything, and that worked out just fine, but I always hated putting holes in my hull. So here we go. I have mounted four magnetic holders. Now these, are very versatile. I hang my lures off them when I'm changing between lures. Um, uh, they're strong enough to hold some of the pliers that I use. And if you're like me, you wanted the fanciest kayak ever, or you want the fanciest kayak ever. And I just thought it'd be awesome to have a lighting system in my kayak. And so I looked into it, and there's some $300, $400 lighting systems. You get a whole bunch of buttons you can push and lights up your kayak just the way you want it to. Well, if you're also like me, you're on a budget. So what I did was I found some of these pen kind of style LED lights. Now this one you might notice is a little bit different. These are really hard to find, at least for me, and it's a black light slash blue light and they're magnetic in the handle so at night if I'm ever fishing I just hang them upside down and that blue light doesn't look very bright now but it's really bright at night so that I think has been kind of a nice innovation and a good maybe $20 solution to having a $300 lighting system on this side, I also have some just white lights, and if you angle them down, it's amazing how they just light your kayak up. So I think that's one thing that might be unique to my kayak. Less holes in the wall, and magnetic and Velcro mounts. I mentioned my lure holders. And there they are in action. It's so nice to be able to switch out a lure and just hang it there to keep it out of the way until I need it again. I also put things like my scissors. They stick right on there too. So just a nice way to keep things organized, definitely. I thought you might like to see what kind of Velcro I used. So here it is, Extreme Outdoor Velcro. It says holds up to 15 pounds and you get five strips in there. It wasn't very expensive. It was probably about around $10, and you can get it at any home improvement store. So there you go. There's your Fisher MN secret tip. And it's, it's done well. This is my second year using it, and it, it's holding up just great. All right, so the next question is, what's in the storage? Well, let me open it up and show you. The first thing you should always have on your mind is safety. So this is a little bilge pump. Um, every year before I start going out, I test it out. Today I test it out in a bucket of water and it pumps a lot of water by hand. So just having one of these, just in case something would happen, you've got that ability to pump water out. So that stays in there all the time. 
And then the anchor trolley system I was talking about, here's my anchor. Don't need a very big anchor for a kayak. Um, this one is done well in all situations. It's kind of like a grappling hook type of anchor and uh, easy to put down, easy to pull up. Some more essentials. Got my dry storage bag. So actually I'm going to take it out and we'll put them on top here and I'll show you what I've got. First and foremost, you need a first aid kit. Um, you don't want to be in that situation where you know you need one. When you need one, you should just have it in there right away. Um, I was lucky enough to have one in. I was fishing after dark on the Rum River, fighting the current, fighting the fish, and then I got a hook in my hand. So I was able to, with the other hand, get out my first aid kit and get everything taken care of and get that hook out of my hand. So having a first aid kit, very important. Safety first, you wanna be safe on the water. Uh, speaking of safe, make sure you always have some sunscreen. Bug spray, definitely need the bug spray. Um, else, uh, other things I have, I like to kind of have two of everything just in case. So I've got a camera mount in here. Uh, for lake fishing, marker buoy. I have found some very successful crappie days because I was able to mark the spot. Even if you have it on your GPS, on your depth finder, sometimes just seeing that buoy is a little easier. All right, I got a question for you. Do you have one of these? Do you have a plastic stringer? This was my dad's when he was very young and he gave it to me and you cannot find them. But let me tell you, these plastic stringers are perfect for panfish. Um, if I'm out for panfish and I put a couple of fish on the stringer and I don't catch any more and I don't wanna keep those two, they're almost always alive because of this plastic stringer. Some of the heavier stringers drag them down and, and really are rough on the fish, but this is, this is awesome. So thanks, Dad, for this. Backup rain gear. I've got a really nice pair of rain gear, but you know what? Having a backup pair just in case you didn't pack or a storm comes up quickly, um, usually can get some frog togs at Walmart for about 20 bucks. Well, lo and behold, what else would I have in there? couple of backup booyah pad crashers. If you watch my channel, you know these are my frogs. Rope. I always have some rope. And you know, I don't know much about rope, but this has served me pretty well. I have it on my hook in the back. Um, also, if I'm traveling on a river and I want to go up river and drag my kayak, you can rig up a rope system that'll make it a lot easier. Um, also to tie off your kayak or whatever else you need. So just having some extra rope is good. And those are the basics that I keep in my dry bag in my kayak. Now, another thing that I'm gonna add in that storage almost every trip are um, drinks, or depending on how long I'm gonna be in the kayak, some, something to eat. Because if you love fishing as much as I do, those days go by pretty quick. And you think, hmm, I've been on the lake for about six hours. Have I eaten anything? And especially in a kayak, when you're the one providing all the power, you're going to want something to eat. So don't forget the snacks. When you remove this storage bin, you have some more room in here. There are two other things I put in here. One is my battery for my fish finder, and that goes right here. And then another paddle. Well, it's actually the extension of the paddle that I have. So if something happens with the drive and you're a ways away, you can have a regular two-sided kayak paddle. Um, I store this one underneath and I just keep the other one. Um, the other one you probably noticed had a handle and that handle just comes off and hooks right here to this one. I've only had to use it once and let me tell you, it's a little clunky in a kayak, especially on the river, going up current with that double paddle system. Um, the drive, it, it's just a bigger kayak and uh, it works, but it's not something you're gonna wanna do for a long time. So that doesn't happen too often. A Couple other things you'll notice in a Hobie kayak, plenty of uh, storage. This was a great innovation that they made. They made this um, storage pouch 
rubber. The last one was um, in my 2014 haul. It was made out of um, kind of a ropey material and if you had any hooks in there they got stuck instantly. Another great thing where the rod is the rod rack in the newer models. It just kind of holds those rods up a little bit. Um, I've stored up to four. It shows that you can store six, but I don't think that is um, too feasible. Hobies also have this great seat. It's called Vantage Seating with every kind of um, adjustment you can imagine. You got a lumbar adjustment. You can um, sit high in the seat. You can sit low in the seat. Just super comfortable. Um, I've spent up to nine hours on a lake, so definitely the seat is uh, nice and comfortable. And the fact that you can stand up and fish, that helps too. But right in front of you here, this is really nice. You can store your tackle boxes right in front of you. And I'm not too complicated how I fish. So usually two boxes will be just great for what I need for the day. Another thing I mentioned uh, when I was doing my driveway walkthrough was my Plano tackle box system. So here it is in action. I've got these 3650 size boxes and they can interchange on top of the Plano tackle box. And when I have a specific thing I want to fish for, I just pop them in here and then they're right at my fingertips. So kind of a nice system if you have a Hobie Pro Angler because these boxes fit perfectly into the system here. And also, they have a big compartment on the bottom side where you can keep all your essential things also. And this fits right under the seat. So having one of these and two boxes in here for me is plenty of tackle for a fishing day. All right, I think that's pretty much it. That's my kayak. That's um, how I set it up for fishing. And it's served me well so far. I've been a Hobie kayak owner for six years now. So I'm loving fishing out of the Hobie kayak. Uh, if you're thinking about one, I'm saying yes, get it. Uh, they're expensive, but they're worth it. I always tell people on the lake, it's not just my kayak, it's also my health club membership. So um, you get some great exercise out there on the Hobie. Thanks for taking this walk through with me. Definitely put any questions you might have in the comments section. Thanks for watching. Hope you're getting out there and catching fish.